to the class as well. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start to the class if there is no other question. Uh, good, so no question. Uh, great, so let me uh, start and uh, talk about the Uh, so we talk uh, and we gave a description of the way that we are going. We talk about, I mean, the first we start with uh, NP and uh, NP hardness. That's the most important one. Also, it is uh, at, in the book as well. So we talk about uh, NP hardness and uh, the fact that uh, what is inside NP, what is above NP, and what is below NP. Above NP means harder than NP generally. Below NP means that these guys are maybe easier than NP, but because of big data or other restrictions like game theory or other things that we have it, still we don't know the exact specifications of them. Uh, great. So let me share a screen. Uh, great. So uh, let me. Uh, so you can see the screen, correct? Yes, you can see it. Uh, okay, good. Uh, and in general, if I mean there is something that is not clear, please mention to me. The sooner the better. That's the. Just put it like this. That would be easier that I can. Yes. Uh, there are the things there. Uh, good. Yeah. Just. Just want to make sure that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's start with the uh, introduction to complexity and we talk for MP. By the way, uh, as I mentioned before, also please uh, try to read the book as much as possible and especially about the scribe notes. You can put your sections there and you can just uh, try to read those sections. And I mean, the way as I mentioned, uh, two important things is to just read them if there are something that can be improved in terms of writing in terms of more explanation you can mention it and at the end of the also you need to give uh, something like uh, at least five problems that are very important and maybe there is not much discussion in that section you can mention the the problem uh, what is the hardness and the reference for that that would be something that you need to do it for each sections um you can ask uh, Kiarash, uh, you can email him and ask for some samples if you want as well. Uh, great. Now, uh, so here we talk, uh, let me just bring this one. Great. Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, and you can read my handwritten notes, correct? The one that I'm writing currently. So do you see the blue and uh, red? Yeah, we can see it. Uh, great. Okay. So uh, let's start with the problems which are in P. Means problem which are can be solved in polynomial time. And polynomial time, we mean n to the c for some constant c. Then we have the class uh, exponential, uh, exp, problems which are solvable in two to the nc. 
And we have also, I mean, you can say that this is the log class. These are the problems which are solvable in, this is like a polylog, I will say, uh, log n to the C. So this is the, the polylog class. Uh, generally, I mean, polylog, uh, I mean, it might be not possible because we may need to read at least the data one time such that we can get some, um, uh, we don't want to miss any part of the input. So we need to read it and so order any is needed. Uh, however, uh, actually in the live that we had it just this uh, uh, Sunday with Professor uh, Nogal and actually he was mentioning about the property testing there. We may not want to get the solutions exactly, but we want to get maybe approximately. In that case, for some problems, even reading the constant number of input at random is enough to decide with some probability whether we satisfy it or not satisfy it essentially, or very far from it. So if you don't want, if you don't care about the exact algorithm, then polylike class becomes important. And as I mentioned, please take a look at that live as well. That's, there are several nice open problems, open areas that he mentioned. And it might be good if you want to work on some problems or for the project for this course. Uh, yeah, the other one is the live with Professor Madhu Sudan and Peter Short. These are also some, they have some nice problems that you may want to uh, think about for the projects or for your good. Now we have the class R in addition of that. These are the problems solvable in finite time. Uh, R means essentially comes from recursive. It means that uh, somehow the problems that, I mean, I think uh, Turing introduced and Church introduced and uh, we are talking essentially the Turing machine here. So as you can see, uh, uh, these are the things that we have it. We have P, we have EXP, we have R, and we have uh, some uncomputed, like uncomputable or undecidable problems which are here. And we know strictly that P is not a subset of, uh, so is a subset, but is a proper subset, is not equal. The same for EXP versus R. There is a subset, but a proper subset. Uh, great. Let me bring this one down. Clear out the rank. And back to this. Great. Uh, now, uh, some examples of this. For example, uh, these are, I mean, some important problem that I will mention. It's the negative weights cycle problem. Is it, is pre, what is the negative weight problem? Is that you are given a graph, whether you want to see, is there a set of edges that they form a cycle and some of these weights is negative? That you can actually do it with a Bellman-Ford algorithm it's a non-trivial non problem, but the important problem has lots of applications. The other one is uh, n times n chess. Whether this belongs, uh, this belongs to exp, but not belong to p. And uh, so you can actually read uh, this one, the n times n chess. Uh, generally, uh, when we talk about this version of the problems, the games. So if you consider eight by eight chess, then in this case, uh, the size of the solution is bonded. Uh, of course, the problem is hard. We don't know who does win it. But uh, the reason is that, I mean, the constant, so everything is constant if you consider eight by eight. So, uh, I mean, it's actually, okay, not completely constant because there might be some kind of uh, loop that forever you are doing some operations. For example, uh, uh, if you have, I mean, a king and a knight and the other person has a knight, then you cannot essentially win. It's not enough. So in that case, it may actually take infinite time. But here, generally, for when we talk about the games, there is some aspect of the game 
that should be large. For example, if we, uh, I think you can see the exact definition of n by n chess, uh, but the, the most important thing is that the board is n by n for the given parameter n. And this n is very important. Always we have this n in the input. And uh, so for games, generally when we talk about the games, the size of the board should be larger. And this is a typical thing that they are doing. For example, if you see logo, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Legos, for example, or uh, other type of game, this kind of puzzles, whenever they want to make harder puzzles, they are just making bigger. So in some sense, the there is a parameter n that becomes larger. And the question is that when it becomes large, I mean, if, uh, uh, so it seems that uh, we need exponential time actually, and polynomial time is not enough. Uh, another problem is Tetris. Uh, so we are talking about this one. Tetris also uh, belongs to exponential time, but we don't know whether it belongs to P or not. Uh, what is the Tetris? So the Tetris problem is, is this one that, I mean, this, I mean, you have played probably all of you. These are the things that are coming. We talk about this one. These are the parts that are coming here from the top. And when they, when you have one, uh, 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 when one board is coming essentially, then if you have all of this field essentially somehow, then this page disappears. Uh, this row sorry, it disappears. And then you will continue this game. So this one, again, uh, here uh, we are considering this is one parameter here that the size of this uh, might be a small, but the number of pieces might be. And so this is uh, like, the, this is a version that we are considering. We are talking more about it late. Uh, another problem is the halting problem. So the halting problem does not belong to R. What is the... Uh, uh, what is the halting problem? Is the problem of uh, determining from a description of an arbitrary computer program and an input, whether this program will finish running or continue to run forever. So you are given the code and an input, and somebody asks whether this code on this input will end or essentially gives a stack overflow, or I mean, like it runs forever. This problem is uh, undecidable over Turing machine. I mean, you can just search there. We don't uh, <clears throat> go through the details of it. It's a very famous problem. And this is, I mean, not hard. So, I mean, you just create, I mean, some gadget and say that, okay, if it does not, uh, uh, if if there is such a program, then you will run it on itself. That's somehow the ideas. And then you will contradictions either way. Uh, yeah, so that's the things about uh, this part. And uh, here, let's clear everything. Okay, uh, so here, uh, when we uh, talk about P means all decision problems solvable in polynomial time. And uh, so that's the things that we uh, consider it. Uh, so, and what about NP? So uh, the class, Uh, so NP, of course, I mean, somebody can read it non-polynomial, uh, but I mean, so far it has been the case. I mean, we don't have any solution for that, but really that's not the exact meaning. The, the exact name NP comes from a non-deterministic polynomial. So in some sense, it's a positive word. It means that uh, actually, if you consider non-deterministic, then it is polynomial. Uh, sometime also, I mean, this is somehow, maybe we could call it VP. What is the VP means uh, verifiable in polynomial time. That I think that maybe explain it. Viable in poly time. Uh, 
Uh, good. So uh, these are the decision problems which are solvable in polynomial time via a lucky algorithms. Uh, what's the meaning of lucky algorithm? It means that uh, there are actually several ways you can consider it. You can consider it if we can have lots of guesses in pol we can have lots of guesses, potentially uh, exponential number of them. And then for each, but this is, that's the meaning of non-determinism, means there is a pol essentially parallel. Non-deterministic means parallel. It means that in parallel, we can check uh, lots of solutions. So, uh, um, in NP, as I mentioned, the VP would be a better name. It means that if somebody give me a certificate, then I can check whether this is a... Uh, so if you can make a lucky guess that we can call it a certificate, uh, then we can find the solution out of it. And uh, the way that actually we are always using it to show that this cert so we need to say that if, uh, so uh, what is NP means that there is a certificate that can help us to see whether, and note that this is a decision problem. So this a decision problem means that uh, we need to say whether the solution is yes or no. That's the meaning of decision problems. So uh, somebody is given this problem, for example, if we talk about it, is there any satisfiable formula for satisfiable assignment for this formula or not? means that that make it through the whole thing, yes or no. Or is there, for example, Hamiltonian, is there a, a, a TSP of a traveling salesman problem of a total length X or not? And this X is given to you. So everything is decision problem, yes or no. So that's the thing that we mentioned here, all of this problem that we talk about, we are talking about the decision problems. And uh, here, uh, so uh, let me just, uh, I mean, uh, check that. I mean, there is no one uh, behind. Great. Uh, yes, I will just check that. I mean, there is no one in the uh, waiting room or something like this. Uh, great. Uh, yes. So uh, generally, I mean, we are talking about a decision problem, and a certificate is given to us such that uh, if the solution, I mean, and we are talking about the solution, uh, yes or no. So if, if somebody says the solution is yes, he can uh, cert give us a certificate, and with that certificate, we can then decide in polynomial time whether the solution is yes or not. And that should be always right. So what's the meaning of that? It means that that certificate should be enough for us to say the yes or no correctly in polynomial. And often, what's the meaning of the certificate? The certificate means uh, just a solution. So uh, solu I mean, what is the best way? Say, for example, somebody wants to give a, I mean, for a satisfying formula, is so that, yes, you can solve it. Uh, uh, like there, there is an assignment that make it true. So the best way is that to just give me the assignments. So whenever I have this that certificate or that solution, that should be easy to check whether this solution is indeed a solution or not. So generally, the the only thing that we need to check it in polynomial time is that whether uh, this a solution that I get is a valid solution or not. Uh, Sometimes actually this. Uh, P versus MP, uh, 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 you can think about this way. This is like more like a philosophical problem. So there are two ways that you can consider. So like uh, sometime you can say that, uh, uh, this is actually, let me say this, this example. So you will essentially get, uh, I mean, uh, paintings. Uh, one person is very good to say that whether this painting is good or bad or maybe say the value of the painting. Other one is a good painter, essentially, that can paint well. So the question is that, uh, 
eventually, if the person knows what is good and bad, if paid, any painting that you will say, is it, oh, is it good painting? Is it a, like maybe is it a, uh, like a, what is the value of this painting? Whether this person can be a good painter as well or not. In some sense, painter is the person that finds the solution for you. I mean, there are from all possible uh, possibility of painting, the, paints a nice one for you. This other guy, uh, he's not, uh, or she's not, I mean, I, I, we don't know whether she's good at painting or not, but we know that any painting that we will give it to him or to her, that person can decide whether this is a good painting or not. Uh, you can say, I mean, the good is when that it is drawn by, I mean, a good artist or not. Whether this person that knows can understand, and this is exactly like NP. This guy, whenever I'm giving a solution, in this case, a painting to that, it can decide, this person can decide whether it is a good painting or not. Then the question is that whether this person actually is a good artist himself or not. So uh, does it make sense, the example? So please unmute and answer. So is the example clear? Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So uh, this is actually a nice way of seeing P versus MP, like the, this kind of even philosophical problems that a person who can distinguish good and bad, I mean, can he draw as well as well, or can he create the solution or not? That's exactly the problem that we have it versus P versus MP. That is certificate, which is the solution, which is a painting, for example, is given, and then we need to, say it is good or bad in it. The running time should be polynomial. Uh, and uh, and uh, as I mentioned, this non-deterministic model, essentially it means parallel model. So uh, when we talk about the parallel model, it means that, uh, I mean, these are the algorithms that they can make the guesses all simultaneously, non-determinism means in parallel. And then for each of them in polynomial time can decide whether this is a solution, yes or no. And uh, guesses should be enough to lead to a, a yes outcome if possible. So if this is a, so in some sense, uh, you may try all possible solutions, for example. But uh, uh, so the, the idea is that in parallel uh, for NP, you should be able to in parallel. We don't talk about the number of uh, parallels. That can be actually exponential, like all possible solutions. In parallel, uh, if we have lots of computers, can we give the solution to each of, I mean, can we give certificate to each of these computers uh, such that at the end of the day, when we come back, uh, if one of these guys, they say that the solution is yes, that the solution to the actual problem is yes, and all of, if all of them say no, then the solution is no. Uh, and again, this is, a, I think that I mentioned also, these are the different versions of P not equal to MP. As I mentioned, these other, these philosophical things actually came from P not equal to MP, which is a nice problem. So uh, like generally, if the person is good at detecting good art, whether it, this person is a good artist himself or herself or not. And uh, I mentioned also this is uh, the problem that can be checked in polynomial time. Uh, and uh, this is also another view that if the solution, that, that we will talk more with that. Uh, so it, it, for MP, the question is that if the answer is yes, somebody can prove it. <coughs> for us. Uh, we said, and the proving, the, to prove that it takes a polynomial time algorithm to check. Uh, what's the meaning of that? So when the answer is yes, we should be able to prove it in polynomial time. It means that, I mean, again, for the satisfying assignment, if there is a satisfying uh, assignment to the problem, 
then you should be able to prove it for me. How can you prove it? You can, the best way is that you will give me the solution and then I can check in polynomial time whether uh, this is actually a solution for the problem or not. So as you will see, I mean, this is an easy thing to do. Uh, like, like, uh, so showing the problem is in NP actually is easy because we only need to say that uh, for a certificate, this certificate in particular can be the solution. Often we just come the solution. Just give me the solution, whether the solution is correct or not. Uh, so, uh, and again, this view that if the solution is yes, you can prove it. What would be the proof? You will just show me the uh, solution or the certificate. But if the answer is yes, yes. If the answer is no, then we talk about coin P. Uh, great. Any question so far? Any question? Okay, so let me just do this one and then go to the next page. Great. So uh, let's draw this one. So we have the class P here, but so uh, this is the one that we have. We have the class P, we have the class NP, and then exponential time. And then uh, so this is a current uh, computational difficulty. So we're just adding essentially P versus NP here. So we have P and NP is something between P and NP. And uh, I mean, uh, these are, again, so I just mentioned for the Tetris problem. So for the Tetris, uh, actually, for example, for the Tetris, we are also considering, as I mentioned, the size of the board be n times m, where m is less than m. So in Tetris, there is a sequence of pieces that are given and a board of size n times m. And uh, the question is that, uh, and an initial configuration is given to us. And the question is that whether we can survive or not. So as I mentioned, any completely filled in row is cleared and all pieces above that drops by one row. Uh, it is interesting, actually, if the uh, here, if the size of the board, so if this width of the board, if uh, that is bonded, uh, then actually we can solve the problem with dynamic programming. We may talk about it later. So we can, so, so if this part is bonded, if this is bonded, then it is in P. <coughs> so if it is bonded, then it is belong to P. And by bonded means constant essentially. But generally we consider N by M, and for this case, the question is that these are the pieces are coming and like some pieces like this, some other pieces like this, some things like this. They are coming and the question is that whether you can survive. And surviving is that you can actually do the operations. You will move these things to the correct things such that you don't fill in uh, everything. So if, if at some point, I mean, if at any time you can just remove this line and line such that you can put all these pieces that are coming, you can put uh, all of them in, then it means survive. But if you go essentially on top of this page, then it means that you lost the game. Uh, uh, 
And uh, so this is also interesting. Why is this problem? Uh, so uh, uh, this problem belongs to NP. Uh, why it is belong to LP? Because I mean, if you know uh, each of these pieces, somebody tells that, okay, this one should move to here. This one should move to here. This one should move to here. If a certificate or solution is given to you, then it is easy to check in polynomial time. I mean, whether you survive or not, because you will see that, okay, you will just put these guys accord. So the solution is given to you. Then you can decide whether you will survive or not. Uh, and in some sense, the proof of yes is that you need to list the moves to make. And uh, 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 if we, uh, the moves are given to you, so the proof of yes is that somebody gives a solution. So you can survive, okay, give me the solution. And then I'm just moving through that. And this is the one, the same thing that I have on this bonded P is this one. That if you have N by M, and this is N essentially, and this is M, then uh, for constant N, the problem is easy to solve in polynomial time by dynamic programming, that you can actually do that. Uh, there are some other versions of that that's actually is a good problem, I mean, to think about. You get, there are some papers. And here, uh, one other thing, so especially for P not equal to MP or this problem, which are hard. <laughs> we are talking about uh, games. Why? Because the... Uh, <laughs> Nowadays, if you have a proof of a paper that this problem is NP or is, actually we talk more about not only NP, but also NP complete that we will talk. <coughs> the paper. The paper generally cannot get in a, just if the, this is the main result, the paper cannot get into a good, Good conference, except if there are very few problems, like for example, graph isomorphism or factoring, or these are the very famous problems that if you solve this problem, then you will get all media attention and the paper awards and <laughs> several other awards. But other than that, if you solve this, you might be it might be hard even to publish. So we had, I think even like 10 years ago, we had some problem. We want to say that the problem is MP hard. And all we have done it is that we have put it as a footnote that how you can put this, why this problem is MP hard. So we didn't even to put it as the main things. It's still, I mean, in the areas like AI, like the conferences like triple AI, NURIPS or something, they are proving the, these problems or essentially for the games. Uh, that is also a very, I mean, they have a nice community. The, uh, this is a conference called FUN, F-U-N, that if you search, they're actually, they are proving this kind of hardness for several games, etc. And for games, it's quite non-trivial. And I think I was actually, Eric Demain is doing on some of this. And I was talking with him and some of this game, the people think that, okay, we have the proof, but it turns out the proof is wrong. And there is some bug in the gadget, in the reduction. That say, for example, if you can uh, solve uh, this game, if you can decide about Tetris, then we can solve the satisfying assignment problem. Uh, and there are bugs because these are compute, uh, these are complicated moves that you can do it. So uh, still for the uh, problems, for the game problem, there is an active community that they are working on this set of problems. And uh, people are uh, like actually <coughs> uh, working on uh, this set of them and publish them. And the proofs are quite complicated as well. Uh, great. So this is, I mean, an example for test. You can search, actually, there are some more in the book, and also you can, there are some references in the book and others that you can find it as well. Uh, 
Uh, let me just define the <coughs> uh, great. Now, uh, Uh, of course, as you all know, this is a big conjecture. This is worth at least 1 million. I mean, probably 1 million is not too much now, I will say. <laughs> it might be actually more like in the billions, I will say. Whether P is equal to NP or not, whether it is a good, if the, the person who can detect good art from bad art, whether this person is a good artist or not. Uh, and in some sense, generating proofs can be harder than checking them or not. And uh, actually there are people in both sides, so it's not the case. I think most of people believe P is not equal to MP, but uh, still there are some people actually I say, <coughs> believe P might be equal to MP. Uh, uh, good. <clears throat> so this is <clears throat> another problem here, CoMP, that is also very important. So what is the CoMP class? <clears throat> so the CoMP is exactly the reverse of, I mean, uh, NP in the sense that yes instance, it turns into no instance. So at what was the NP is that if the solution is yes, we should be able to bring a certificate, which this certificate, certificate often was just a solution to the problem. And so if the solution is yes, we should be able to give a proof that the answer is yes. For coin P, if the answer is no, I should bring a proof. So if the answer is no, then I should bring a proof that the answer is no. Uh, and so far, everything that we have uh, bit, uh, essentially in the, uh, so uh, this is also interesting. So anything which is the intersection of NP and coin P belongs to P. So NP and, uh, of course, for polynomial time algorithm, if a, for the problem, if the solution is yes or no, in polynomial time, uh, independent of whether it is yes or no, we should be able to check it in polynomial time. So it is natural for the problem in P, which are belongs to both NP and CoMP, because there we will find the solution, yes or no. And all of them is polynomial time. So either the solution is yes or the solution is no, we will give a proof that the solution is yes or no. That exactly means that essentially it belongs to both P and NP. However, <clears throat> Uh, I mean, we don't know any other problem that does not belong to P and it, it is it belongs to NP intersection of coin P. And uh, like, uh, let me give just one example of a natural problem for coin P. This is a uniqueness problem. So for example, uh, uh, somebody is, uh, I mean, give a satisfying problem. We will talk about satisfying problem, but you should have known this one. <laughs> And the question is that, is there a unique solution for this satisfying assignment? It, what's the meaning of that? It means that for all possible uh, answers that you can give it the true or false to the variables, there is only one way that you can make this formula satisfied. Uh, so uh, any ideas that why this problem belongs to coin P? Please unmute and answer. So if we have two solutions, that means we have a certificate, right? And uh, what would be that certificate? Uh, the two solutions. Exactly. So that's, that's the idea essentially. So if, if the, it is unique, you see, this is actually hard to see that there is a unique solution in polynomial time. I mean, or we don't know, it might be hard. But 
The fact that it is not unique that easy, just give me two solutions. If you can give me two solutions and I can check whether each of them is a solution, then, then this problem belongs to coin P. Clear? <clears throat> so uh, you can say the same thing for the coloring problem. I mean, I talk uh, coloring problem also, we will talk more about it, but generally a graph G is given to me and I want to color the nodes. <clears throat> Uh, that, uh, I mean, this, these are the nodes that are given. I want to give it red, blue, blue. Such that if two edges, if two vertices, both of them <laughs> have an edge, then their color should not be the same. So this is not an acceptable case. We cannot have blue to this. <laughs> and the coloring and even the three coloring problem it means that uh, I want to color the whole graph with only three colors, like red, blue, and green. This problem is MPCARC. And then the question of uniqueness becomes coin P. So is there a unique coloring? <clears throat> of course, if you have R, B, and maybe G, so for three coloring, you can <clears throat> replace <clears throat> R with G, and this is a valid coloring. Or you can replace uh, swap. G and B, and there still is a valid coloring. So that is a, that's a valid thing. But that's the only case that you can do it. You cannot color this graph any other way, essentially, such that it is a valid thing. That's the meaning of the unique coloring. And this problem is also belongs to coin B. Right. Uh, <clears throat> good. Now, uh, having talked about it, uh, let's talk about X hard. So, so far, everything P, uh, coin P, everything it seems, I mean, easy. And to check whether this belongs to NP or belongs to coin P. The problem becomes interesting when, when we talk about X hard problems. What's the meaning of, uh, so this is, uh, this X can be NP, can be EXP, can be anything. So this hard problem can, you can define it for anything. What's the meaning of X hard? It means that this problem is as hard as is as hard as every other problems in X. So when we say yeah, the MP hard problem, it means that this is a problem which is as hard as every other problem that belongs to NP. So what's the meaning of X complete? That's the one that actually this this is the one actually needs more proof and often more complicated, especially for games or for some problems like graph isomorphism or factorization that we don't know the solution yet. So X complete means the problem is X hard and the problem itself belongs to X. So sometimes essentially just belong to X, we mean X easy. Just means belong to X. So a problem is MP complete is X complete means that it is both X hard and X easy. What's the meaning of X hard? As I mentioned, so X easy means that that belongs to X. That generally is easy to say that the problem is in belong to NP or CoMP or something like this, because we can just given the certificate we need to do that. But the problem that becomes X hard means that it should be harder than any other problem that belongs to NP or CoMP or X in general. And so, for example, I mean, we talk about Tetris that this problem belongs to NP, but actually this problem is the NP complete. It means that as hard as any other problem which belongs to NP. And this is the result by, uh, I mean, uh, this guy is essentially Eric and a few other people that you can check it if you want to see the proofs, if you, especially I mean, for the project. And there are some of them also, some ideas of this we talk in the book as well. So we know that if, uh, so uh, what's the meaning of that? It means that if P is not equal to NP, then Tetris belongs to NP minus P. So if P is equal to NP, of course, Tetris also can be solved in polynomial. 
But if P is not equal to NP, because we know that by definition, it is X hard. It's like NP hard. It means that it is harder than any other problem in the class of NP. So if these two are not equal, so this is essentially the idea that, so this is the class uh, NP, and these are the hardest problem here that we call them NP complete. And, and it is important that all these problems here should be as hard as each other. Because if one of them is harder than other, then this definition of MP complete will not be correct. So this problem, which are MP complete, all of them as hard as each other. Uh, and so if this P is not equal to MP and Tetris, we know that it is MP complete. So it means that this problem should be actually belongs to NP minus P. So, so far, or uh, what is the current things that we know about these problems? So, uh, I, I think we had these things before, like P, N, P, A, X, P, and R. Now, in addition of to this one, we have this class of N, P complete problems, which are here. So, these are the hardest problem in N, P. And then we have this X, P hard problem. <clears throat> these are the hardest problem in exp so uh, uh so this is mp complete this is exp complete and what we know we know that tetris belongs to mp complete problems but chess actually belongs to xp hard problems so chess is among the hardest problem in the exponential time things that i mean we talk about it is two to the n so chess is the hardest in the class exp uh, and tetris is the hardest in the class NP. And uh, uh, what is important, this is also some of this that we can actually get it. Uh, this. So we know that chess is XP. So that is, I mean, the proof you can search for it. I think that is also in the book. We know that the ch uh, chess is the EXP complete. So what's the meaning of that? We knew that P is not a subset of. So if you remember, we had this that P is not equal to EXP. <clears throat> so uh, we knew that, I mean, this one P does not belong to EXP. So what's the meaning of that? The meaning is that because chess belongs to uh, EXP, P complete, it means that this is the hardest problem in EXP. So we know that chess, Again, chess with a large board, n by n chess, that cannot be solved in polynomial time. Otherwise, p would be equal to xp, which is a, a contradiction. And also, uh, uh, this is you can say the same thing for chess. So, if chess belongs to, uh, uh, so if np is not uh, equal to exp, that we don't know. So this is the question also we don't know. So we know that P is not equal to XP. That we know. We can actually create such a thing. So exponential time actually gives you more time than polynomial time, that we know. But we don't know whether MP actually is uh, equal to EXP or not. But we know that uh, uh, But what we know, we know that if NP is not equal to AXP, then chess belongs to a problem which is exp minus np. Why again? Because the chess is the hardest problem in exp. Uh, great. Any questions so far? Is everything clear? 
Excuse me. Sure. How can we prove that a chess problem is the hardest problem in this set? Uh, 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 I mentioned uh, that one in the, the things. So what did I mention? I mentioned uh, exactly this, uh, the reason. Uh, the reason, how do we prove it? Uh, what was the definition? Uh, I mentioned, for example, for the, say this is EXP. Uh, yes. Say uh, this is the EXP problems. When you consider the EXP problems, so uh, you know that uh, we have the EXP hard problems. Correct? EXP hard means that this problem should be harder than any other problem in EXP. What's the meaning of that? It means that all of them should be, all of them should be what? As hard as each other. Because we know that these are harder than any other problem. So the only way that you can be harder than any other problem is that all of them uh, uh, should be equivalent of each other. And that's the class of, as I mentioned, this is called EXP complete, correct? This is EXP. So this problem is this problem which are harder in the class of EXP or EXP complete. Now, how can we show that chess I mean, is the hardest problem? Only you need to show that if, as I mentioned, all these problems which are EXP complete, they are equivalent of each other. You only need to show that chess can solve one of these problems, which is in the complete class. So if you can chess, uh, this is the thing that we can say. That. So there is a reduction from chess to one problem, which is EXP hard. And there are such problems. So to show that actually chess is the hardest in the class of EXP, you only need to show that chess is EXP complete. It means that chess can solve one of the problems which are in the class EXP, uh, which is in the EXP complete problem. Okay, thank you. So we do it by reduction to other problems, but how about the root problem? This way we are proving uh, by depending one problem to another. There should be a root that we consider it as a basic problem. Yes, uh, uh, there are such roots. I mean, they are not uh, often uh, easy for the root problem to show that these are hard. Uh, these are like, for example, for satisfiability, we know that, but Stefan Cook has done, for example, for SAT, that is MP complete, that comes from the definition of the class and the Turing machine. That he got essentially Turing award for proving that. The proof is non trivial. So, generally, the first one is uh, hard, but once we have it, that's the thing. So, then the problem becomes easy, essentially. And you can, I mean, just search for that. I think it, we are giving to the uh, reference to the book as well. I don't remember on top of my mind the, the problem. I forgot it actually. But you can check it in the, the book and others for EXP complete problem and you will find it. Especially, I mean, you can see the, the paper that proves chess is EXP complete and see which problem is used as that and then you can find them. Thank you. Great. Uh, okay. So we talk about this one. Now, uh, uh, there is another class that we want to talk about. Is it, so far, I mean, uh, like when we talk about problems, there are several resources that we talk about them. So this uh, resource, one of them can be, one of these resources actually can be uh, time. Another one can be uh, a space. And another one, for example, is the number of rounds, for example, when we talk about streaming algorithms or map reduce algorithms. Uh, so uh, problems solvable in, uh, what is the P space? So the P space is a set of problems which are solvable in polynomial space. 
So, so far we talk about P with problem that are, can be solved in polynomial time. But P space is a set of problems that uh, that's actually, uh, these are problems which are solvable in a polynomial space. Interestingly, so uh, uh, P space actually is a subset of exponential EXP. Why? Because uh, uh, this is the general idea. That, so exponential, the number of spaces that you have is uh, essentially poly is exponential. But the catch is that if you have a tape, I mean, the polynomial space, say that a space here we talk about uh, in terms of bits. Each, each bit is zero or one. So the number of possible, if you have polynomial space, the number of, so for example, this is the things that you can consider it. So this is zero, one, and so on and so forth. And this is a polynomial. So it means that the number of states of this guy is two to the polynomial. And this is essentially the exponential time algorithms. Uh, two to the polynomial, is the one that uh, that would be the uh, exp things and the all possibilities of this we can have it and of course if we have all possibility of this then uh, because we are given a state and we want to say whether we are reaching a state so as long as all these states uh, this is the intu intuition actually we can make it a formal proof all out of it that as long as all of these uh, states that it can be the case is polynomial uh, is uh, like two to the polynomial uh, so it means that an exponential time algorithm can check essentially all possibilities and see whether from these possible things do we reach to this state or not. This is the intuition, but you can see the formal proof uh, in the book or other place. Uh, good. And we know that uh, that's also interesting. So we know that P space is a subset of EXP. Also, we know that it's a superset of NP. Why? Uh, what was, again, the definition of NP? Uh, the definition of NP is that whenever you have, a, this is, you can consider a parallel algorithms that it just uh, gets a certificate, in particular, tries all solutions and see whether any of them is actually the correct solution for the problem. However, uh, and the issue is that all of them, you can't do it. Uh, there are only um, all solutions that you want to check it. So that's actually interesting. So all, uh, here, that's, that's the interesting thing about polynomial space. We can have actually this, some kind of parallel algorithm. Why? Because we only need to enumerate all possible certificates, in this case, the solutions. So it means that, for example, for satisfiability, you need to consider all sorts of essentially satisfiability that we have. And then for each of them, then in polynomial time, we can check whether this is a solution or not. And enumerating all possible certificate, that's something that we can easily do it in, polynom in polynomial space. Not in polynomial time, but in polynomial space. Because you can go, like first, for example, we start for the case that everything is zero for satisfiability. Then we will go the case that zero, 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 one, then zero, 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 one, zero, then this is one, one, and so on and so forth. That we can go there. So we can just write this one on the tape, I mean, or the memory, and then check whether this is a solution or not. Write this one and check whether it is polynomial. So everything that we need is polynomial. So we know that actually uh, P space is somehow sandwiched between NP and EXP. But interestingly, uh, we, uh, it is open whether any of them is strict or not. So we don't know whether P space is a proper subset of, or a strict subset of EXP, and whether NP is a Mm. proper or like a strict subset of P space. So what is this one? This is the P space. So just adding to the this one. So P space is this class. And then this is the class of P space hard, which belongs, again, the hardest problem in P space. Uh, we talk about one of these problems, essentially. What is this problem? So uh, again, uh, uh, so uh, it is interesting. So. In general, actually, the fact that, for example, we know that P is a proper subset of EXP is a very important fact. Uh, generally, this is the idea that uh, this is the thing that we have it in this class, assumptions and reductions. So uh, in 
computational complexity almost always uh, we have I mean set of problems uh, like the people I mean we cannot prove that much that two things are equal or not equal so that's the thing that the people whenever they have it and sometimes I mean they cannot essentially solve it via the other problem they just introduce a new class and whenever I mean a person or persons can prove that two of these classes they are just equal they generally get like the best paper award in a conference or other things. So in some sense, that's the thing that we are doing. These are hard problems that we just introduce new classes, new classes, new classes. And whenever we show that two of them are equal, that will be, we will be very excited about it. Uh, because these are hard set of hard problems and this has been the approach so far. So uh, for example, the fact that PS, PS space is a proper subset of, is a super set of NP, so there is a problem in P space that it is that does not belong to NP. That would be very big results. Or the other one, say that there is some problem in EXP that actually we cannot solve it in polynomial space. That would be a very big result as well. So uh, this is the current thing. And this is the one example again, the rush R problem. So the rush R, this is a game. Again, you can just read it in this uh, book. This is again, another game. Uh, how many of you, uh, that's actually, let me just ask you the question. So uh, please, uh, hands up if you've played Rush R. So nobody has played Rush R so far? Uh, Uh, okay, so uh, but uh, so this is I mean one of these games. These are I mean the people uh, I didn't play it actually well. So this was the thing that uh, Eric actually I mean I think played and I mean that's the thing that popular in the gaming community. Uh, but anyhow, uh, yes. So uh, that's the thing that I mentioned. So for example, this game it is a PS based company. We give some ideas in the book as well, uh, and and. Uh, What's the meaning of that? Uh, so uh, if we say that uh, this rush R, we say that it's a PS space complete. Now we know that this problem does not belong to P. Why? Uh, so it does, okay. So it, it, this, uh, this problem does not belong to P if P not equal to MP or if NP is not equal to PS space. Uh, and, why? Because I think we know that NP is a subset of P space. So if P is uh, not equal to MP, so then uh, we know that this problem is the hardest in the P space complete. So uh, that implies essentially that this problem cannot belong to P. So essentially you can see it from this diagram that why is it the case? Because if one of these guys are strict, if P is not equal to MP or MP does not belong to P space, because PMP is sandwiched between this. So this problem is the hardest class here. So this problem cannot belong to P. So this problem cannot belong to P if either this condition is strict or this, this essentially part is strict. Uh, good. So uh, uh, this is also interesting that we, uh, now let me just clear our drawing here. Good. So uh, beyond exponential. Uh, so there are also, I mean, something beyond exponential. So we have exponential time. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, so uh, we, that is actually this is between uh, a space and this. So we had exponential time. So we have exponential time. Then we have exponential space. We know that exponential, so time always is somehow weaker than a space. So exponential time is a subset of exponential space. And then uh, exponential space is a subset of double exponential time because of the same reason that I have mentioned. Double exponential means that uh, it is two to the two to the nc. So uh, always we have this type of thing between time and the space. A, a time is less than a space 
And uh, because of course, if it is time, is this one the total thing that you will? If the total time to solve a problem is this x, then uh, at most you are writing into memory x <laughs> number. So of course, if you have x amount of a space, that should be enough. So time is weaker than a space, and a space is generally it uh, is a subset of exponential in time. Why is it the case uh, again? Because it is uh, when we have it. Uh, uh, all possibilities of a space would be two to the space. So if you have a space X, then you can actually simulate this one with two to the X time. So we know that we have exponential time. We have a double exponential time. We know that uh, exponential time is a proper subset of double exponential time, but we don't know the relation between uh, EXP space uh, between these two. And then uh, we know that double exponential time is a subset of a double exponential space and so on and so forth. So uh, 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 as I mentioned, uh, so uh, like this L, the class L means log space. It means that log n bits of a space is enough. So uh, uh, yes, uh, so uh, uh, I mentioned, we know that exponential time is a uh, is a proper subset of double exponential time and so on. So we know that for uh, when we talk about time itself, we know that it is a subset of each other. And, uh, and of course, I mean, because of this, we know that also exponential time is a, sub is a proper subset of double exponential space. So that also, uh, we have that one. But uh, uh, this is uh, also in important. So. Uh, uh, so this log space is interesting. So I mentioned log time is not that interesting unless we want to give, I mean, we have some errors because uh, you might not be able to find a uh, uh, solution. Uh, so uh, when we talk about exponential uh, space, uh, uh, like exponential time is not that interesting. Why? Because, uh, it is, exp uh, 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 sorry, uh, got confused. Yeah, uh, so a uh, log time is not that interesting because then we cannot even read the whole input. We can just maybe approximately say it satisfies or not. However, log space is very in interesting because again, this is the issue that we don't know the relation between log space and uh, polynomial time. So we know that anything that can be solved in a uh, log space that is a subset of actually uh, P, but we don't know whether this is a proper or not. So log space and P, we don't know this, uh, this solution. So, uh, and log, actually we can put just log just before here. So the log is, is essentially, so we have P and then we have log. So these are essentially the subsets that we know. Uh, so, uh, so the problem with our log space is a subset of, uh, we know that it is a subset of polynomial time because all things that you can write in log space would be polynomial time. But we don't know whether it is proper or not. And we have this kind of hierarchies, as I mentioned. A time is a subset of a space and a space is a subset of two to the exponential time. Using that, you can, using the same thing, you can say that actually L is a subset of P but we don't know this one. But uh, we have also this one. So from this time and the space hierarchies, we know that all the times when you go exponential, these are proper subset of each other. And of course, trivial is a subset. The, the interesting thing here is this proper subset. And we can say the same thing for a space. So uh, one interesting thing, uh, this is actually about uh, PS space. Uh, so for P space, and again, we mentioned the main problem is P versus NP. We don't know whether P is equal to NP or not. However, when we talk about P space versus NP space, that actually we know that. So we know P space and NP space are the same. So in some sense, if we want to say that, uh, uh, Really, if you have the space, so a space is doing actually the parallelism al already. So if you do it non-deterministically in a space, that does not help you. And again, the issue is that, I mean, essentially we are enumerating anyhow over all possible things and we have a space to do that. So the fact that you can do parallel on parallel, it means that you are just doing parallel. That's somehow the idea. Because as I mentioned, a P space means somehow parallel. 
in p space means parallel on top of parallel so top parallel on top of parallel essentially just means parallel and that's the thing that savage's theorem that's a very actually useful things that says that when you want to say this one then you can just uh, essentially instead of np space you can also solve the p space so uh, that's also very useful to prove that essentially something uh, belongs to np space we only need to consider the polynomial version of that so if somebody gives us the solution whether we can decide in a polynomial space which is a solution or not uh, uh, so and uh, we can say the same thing so these are uh, we can say essentially uh, uh, nxp means uh, uh, like non-deterministic uh, exponential and double exponential these are the same thing that we can do it and the similar theorem for non-deterministic space is correct uh, okay so i think uh, let me clear all the line here uh any question we talk about the reductions and other some important problems in the next session any question everything has been clear <laughs>